shut up and sit down. Howdy guys, Andy from Big Max Workshop and Painting Studio, and this is part two of the World Eater. Now, if you've uh, seen the um, conversion, uh, awesome. If you haven't, we're going to put a link in the description so you can uh, check that out as well, because this is a Primaris World Eater. Right, so as you can see, uh, quite an unusual model, uh, and we painted it white to start with, uh, which is unusual in, in itself for us as well. So to start off with a bit of airbrush work, and we're coming from the underneath with uh, Israeli sand. Now the top, uh, the uh, layer from above is an, is an off-white, sort of a, a light grey colour, which is the Vallejo white, um, uh, gray, light grey prime. And as you can see, I'm just throwing some uh, depth into the model, just getting a bit of uh, shadow in there uh, before we start working. Okay. Now, this is all done by hand from here on in, so you'll be good, uh, glad to know. It just made life a little bit easier coming uh, coming from underneath with the airbrush. You could have done that by hand. Uh, it just makes life a bit easier for me to do um, to do it that way. As you can see now, I'm just starting to black out everything. That's an important process in any paint job, uh, getting all the uh, colours back to the base layer, what you want to work with. Uh, as always, we uh, like to work with a black base, so um, you get a nice amount of shade in the uh, paintwork. I'm doing that across the entire model. Anything what isn't going to be white is getting painted black, and uh, that just makes the uh, model look a lot better in the long run. Okay, you. What we're doing now is I'm going back over the uh, grey, uh, cleaning up any of the um, any messy bits. Um, this is using Vallejo Sky Grey. Uh, this is uh, slightly lighter uh, than the Prime, but as you can see, it's still uh, very much on the grey spectrum. It's kind of a creamy grey as well. Um, using these sort of off greys makes paint and white look a lot better um, but doing um, th this particular model uh, is going to be fitting into my World Eater army so I'm not actually paying a lot of attention to getting the glazes really even um, this is because uh, the effects are put on at the end this is um, the paint job is actually quite deliberately scruffy uh, as all the effects at the end make the difference of uh, bringing it all in line with the rest of the army so uh, this is quite a um, forgiving uh, paint style for this particular model. What we're doing now is we're going to go in with some of the off colours and as this is a pre-heresy um, world eater uh, we are uh, using dark Prussian blue uh, for the backpack and his shoulder pads uh, just to tie him in to um, get that nice rich blue uh, what is, um, atypical, which is typical of a pre heresy color scheme. I do really like the pre heresy color scheme. I think it looks a lot uh, more interesting than the, uh, than the classic red uh, from uh, the 40k era. Uh, and it just makes marks, marks my army out a little bit different as well because obviously there's a lot of World Eater armies out there. What are played in 40k and are the red? Mine, somewhat different. So as you can see, get a nice good uh, coat on the uh, backpack and the uh, shoulder pads. Uh, it's going to take a couple of layers because obviously I'm painting it quite thin and we're just going to uh, move on from there once this is ready. On to the silver work and this is getting done with uh, Scale 75's Black Metal. Um, it's not quite as dark as uh, the um, Vallejo one. It's a little bit lighter, it's more on the lines of Iron Breaker or Lead Belcher, I always forget which one's which. Um, but it's still fairly uh, dark silver and this is going on all the um, all the exposed cabling um, any of the chains just the things what would be a bare metal rather than painted and I'm just trying to uh, get everything nice and neat uh, wherever possible I'm trying to keep um, although it's a scruffy paint job you try, I'm trying to uh, keep it neat as well um, onto the trim now and this is all get done in the same colour this is going to be decayed metal by scale 75 um, you've seen us use this before, this is actually the standard paint scheme for uh, my army um, and this stuff is a really good colour, really nice rich sort of um, coppery colour uh, gives you a real uh, nice uh, dark base for uh, any um, nice yellowy golds what you want to um, go over the top and this is going across all the trim, the shoulder pads, any other, um, all the trim on his chest plate uh, so I've used uh, quite ornate um, arm plates on certain uh, areas and that's just going to get a nice uh, layer of the decayed metal uh, just as a, uh, to form a nice base on all the, um, all the detail.
More fan brown is going to be used on the uh, horns and any of the bone work what's on there. Uh, again, it, um, keeping things a little bit different to where uh, normal. I, uh, I don't use more fan brown a hell of a lot. It's kind of an orangey brown. Uh, I wanted this uh, just to look a little bit different to some of the other stuff. Uh, so a couple of layers of more fan brown just to uh, brighten uh, the horns up a little bit. Uh, make them look a little bit more interesting. Also do this on the pistol grip on his uh, bolt pistol. Um, again, much for the same reason. I just wanted them to look a little bit different to any leather work. For the skull sections, I chose a base of heavy brown by Vallejo. Um, much for the same reason as you'd use uh, maybe Carrack Stone or a Shabti Bone. Um, it gives you a real nice, um, deep, good quality base colour for any bone work uh, without it being too dark. But you also get um, a nice smooth coat with it as well. Uh, I'm using this quite a lot for uh, bone at the minute. Um, I'm just finding that things uh, I'm using different colours for certain things uh, than normal, and I'm uh, I'm just experimenting with different colours uh, different colours for the same ideas. For the leather work, I've started off with a base of Scale 75's black leather. Uh, it's another one I've been using a lot recently. Um, it's a really it gives you a really nice um, purpley uh, brown colour, uh, but you do get some really good effects when you start adding all the additional. Uh, colours to it, uh, giving you a really interesting worn uh, leather um, to any strapping or uh, holsters what you got. The chains are done in iron breaker, not uh, black metal. I do I do apologise. Um, this is give this just gives you a slightly different colour uh, on the silvers. Um, just breaks things up a little bit so you can have multiple shades of the same colour uh, even though they are quite similar it does you can still see the difference in the, uh, in the overall picture uh, and it just breaks the um, similarities up a little bit just to take away some of the um, flatness of any um, one colour you're using now it took me a little while to decide what colour I was going to paint the cloak uh, in the end I went for corn red, um, I was going to go for a classic sort of um, world eater uh, red, uh, red colour for the cloak, uh, just to break it up a little bit, add a bit more of the classic colours to the model as well, and it just um, really added a nice um, vibrant co uh, colour to, um, to, to the cloak and just break, break up some of the um, very pale colours on, on the palette, so it just adds a little bit more colour to it um, alongside the blue. Also it gives you a bit of a contrast alongside the blue as well, uh, just helps brighten the model up a little bit. So for the um, spare helmet, uh, we decided to uh, add a little bit of a nod to the studio's Salamander army, uh, so I painted it exactly the same way as we're painting the studio army, which is a base of black forest green, another scale 75 paint. Um, bit of a theme here, I do use a lot of scale 75s, uh, more so than Dodge because they're literally sat in front of me, uh, whereas Dodge gets the GW ones. Um, and this is going to be a real nice dark base for the uh, very vibrant green what's on the um, Salamander dudes. Okay, back onto painting the white now, and we are starting the first highlight, which is off white. As you can see, we're just going around any of the uh, uh, leading edges. Um, quite thick um, highlighting here, uh, it's almost glazing uh, to a point but I'm, again I'm, I'm being a little bit uh, liberal with it, I'm not being over, over uh, cautious with the um, with the highlights here. Um, it's very important when you're doing the um, any uh, stage of any model uh, to know what your overall, overall uh, effect is going to be and I wanted a scruffy effect so I painted in a scruffy style um, which seems a bit counterintuitive at times, but it does give you a different sort of uh, a different sort of paint feel, and then it all tie you tie it all together with different things at the end. 
But as, uh, I'm still trying to keep the uh, highlights um, neater, neat, as neat as possible. Um, obviously, the paint is uh, quite thin. I uh, don't want the uh, highlights to be over the top and overpowering. Even though it is um, a light, a dark white over a light grey, there's still there's still quite a substantial difference, as you can see uh, if you look at the uh, model's foot there. And um, but I'm I'm just focusing on the upper regions. I'm trying to bl uh, leave some of the um, grey uh, visible, um, especially in the more recessed areas, just to um, add that extra layer of shadow uh, where the uh, the sand colour isn't totally showing through. The next colour is Purity White, um, which is going to be a standard edge highlight uh, for this. Uh, you could glaze um, or and do real, really go to town on the, uh, these highlights, um, but painting white over a light grey, um, you, it's very difficult to see, and also you're going to be there for ages uh, to get what feels like very little benefit. So this is a, I, I, I went straight to the white rather than a, a, a slightly darker off white uh, to get, sorry, a slightly lighter off white uh, to go for a single edge highlight as I felt doing multiple edge highlights around the white areas would be um, a little bit redundant. Uh, in what we're going to do now is add some depth to the model and we're starting off with Null Oil. Obviously, this is going all over the um, silverwork. It's also going into any of the uh, real dark recess areas where you want it to be, like maybe uh, into the holster. You, you can put this uh, colour anywhere. You you all know how good uh, Null Null is. Um, you can also put it onto the armour plates. Uh, just make sure it's super thin uh, because you want to keep it inside the recesses. Uh, you really don't want it going on uh, any of the uh, armour plates you've already painted because that will really make a pig's ear out of it. So I personally chose not to, uh, as we're going to do a pin wash right at the end anyway, which will do exactly the same thing, um, just um, with less uh, scope for error. Well, now we're going to start highlighting some of the silver, and we have gone to uh, gunmetal now, um, going all over the chain work. Uh, gunmetal is a nice uh, mid-tone silver, as you can see, we're just starting to pick out any of the uh, all the chain work, any of the areas what would need to be um, highlighted on the silver work, just to get that um, tidy up some of that non oil and uh, start to add some shine to your silver, and you're really going to start to get a good good effect. Uh, just um, because there's a lot of detail work, this uh, this is actual chain. Uh, you can um, use like a an overbrush sort of technique. Uh, I'll just pick up the chain naturally. Um, obviously, on the more flat areas like the um, bolt weapon, uh, you need to be a little bit more uh, accurate. And just uh, try to uh, make sure that you're leaving some of the darker areas um, visible. Now we're going to a second highlight of chrome. And as you can see, I'm just touching the um, most prominent surfaces on the uh, on the chain. I'm doing that across all the silver work. I'm going to get the same nice vibrant um, colour from the chrome uh, which uh, I really like uh, chrome for you get a really good highlight for it um, with quite limit, uh, a very limited amount of effort it really uh, does give you a lot of bang for your buck so I'm going back over um, some of the uh, silver work again uh, with the non oil just add a little bit more depth in there it also blends some of the um, silvers together it really does help tie them together and give, uh, start adding that. Uh, brings them to them three different shades uh, to 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 each other. Uh, adds a lot of um, depth as well to the uh, darker. Area. Onto the trim, and now we're painting. Uh, all of the trim work in the same colour as um, you'd expect what we've done before, which is Victorian brass uh, going pretty much um, as a solid colour over all the uh, decayed metal, uh, leaving some of the decayed metal um, showing through, uh, but only in limited areas. 
but the Victorian brass really does t- um, add you a nice uh, golden colour over the uh, decayed metal. So you get you start to get that classic um, golden trim colour. Uh, add it on all the um, armour plates, including the, sh- um, the shoulders as well. Any of the trim work's done in the same manner. Um, and it just adds that extra start to add them extra colours to it. Excuse the dog. So, adding some depth into uh, the model now, and it's uh, all of the tr- uh, trim work, what we've just done in the Victorian brass, is going to get a nice uh, couple of thin washes of Agrax Earth Shade. As always, I've thinned down the wash, and I'd rather do it twice. Uh, and wait that extra time and um, uh, potentially ruin the model uh, with one um, heavy uh, wash. So it also, as I've said before, it prevents pooling, uh, you give you a bit more control over it, it just takes a little bit longer, uh, but when you're actually putting some effort, real effort into a model, it's definitely worth um, waiting that little bit of extra time. Sorry. Still on with the trim, um, using the Victorian brass again, I'm going to start uh, cleaning up the uh, any of the um, any of the wash areas, but it's also adding a ne- uh, an extra highlight because uh, the previous colour was obviously dulled down by the wash, and now we're bringing the colour back up to itself, uh, which is adding uh, an extra layer of highlight. It really starts to bring uh, those rich colours out. It's starting to get a very cool effect using uh, with the Agrax, just toning things down uh, in the deeper areas, leaving some of the deeper areas um, clean of the uh, Victorian brass as well, as uh, it just sort of it just adds. Um, definition to the model. I start to add shape, uh, shape to it, uh, leaving some of the uh, darker colour showing through. Next on the trim is Amber Alchemy, and this is starting to uh, just work on the most uh, extreme areas where you're starting to see the um, reflection shine uh, from any of the um, from from your light source, shall we say? Uh, again, another very vibrant colour. Uh, gives you a real nice golden effect. Uh, some of the uh, camera work in this particular section is pretty iffy and for that I can only apologise. Uh, but as you can see what I'm doing, I'm just starting to work through the um, most sharpened edges of the model now. Le- taking some of it a little bit into the uh, darker areas just to uh, blend it through but uh, mostly just working on the upper, se- upper surfaces uh, where the light would hit naturally. And for a, fi- uh, a final highlight, um, well, I'll say a final highlight, we're going one more after this. This is Moonstone, um, another scale 75. It's a real natural colour to highlight your gold with. It really does work well. Um, very sort of a uh, silvery uh, colour uh, to it. and just uh, brings all your colours together really nicely and you start to see these real vibrant highlights just uh, starting to pop through on the uh, most upper areas, the most prominent features of the model. Now I've just added a bit of uh, silver into it, this is a uh, scale 75's heavy metal as you can see I'm just um, working on those uh, most extreme areas, the studs in the armour plates, uh, the the corner plate, corner sections on any of the uh, uh, on the shoulders just to get a final edge highlight on there um, and I'm going to just, uh, I'm really, trying to be really accurate but if you do make any mistakes just remember you're gonna, um, you can always put a wash in after just to try and fill out any uh, areas what you've just uh, gone a little bit over um, over the top on, which is exactly what I'm doing now, using a really thin down Agrax Earth Shade, uh, just to tidy up any of the uh, areas where I've just gone a little bit overzealous with the highlighting, and it just brings it, them colours down a little bit and ties it all in together with the rest of the um, section. Start work on some on the bones now, and this is Baneblade Brown, uh, slightly lighter than heavy brown, um, so it's going to give you a nice um, blend upwards from the 
a heavy brown up to a, a nice sort of uh, bone colour uh, in the long run. Um, I wanted these, uh, the bones just to be a little bit different on certain areas. Um, so it's just adding a little bit more colour um, in a different way than what I would normally do. As you can see, I'm, start, I'm still leaving some of the darker colour bef um, behind. Um, just letting the, uh, the Bane Blade Brown just um, change the uh, colour somewhat uh, to be a, a bit more of a, a dull bone colour. So I've added Birch in now, uh, which is scale 75s. Uh, as you can see, I'm just starting to use it as a highlight. Um, quite broad at this stage, uh, wanting to uh, keep some of the darker colours uh, visible but uh, still uh, showing these, um, adding highlight to the model um, on the uh, overall uh, section. So a little bit more birch and as you can see, I'm um, starting to just focus it on the flat planes now, or any of the, uh, on the teeth on that particular section. I'm leaving um, as l a little bit of the uh, dark cores behind still, uh, as I still want to keep that um, transition nice, but obviously I'm still highlighting up away uh, from the darker colour to get a much more natural, um, soft, uh, transitioned highlight onto the model. Um, <laughs> I'm finding it very difficult to explain at the minute. I do apologise. Again, even more birch. This is pretty much uh, pure birch at this stage. Starting to add to the um, most extreme highlights here. As you can see, it's just starting to uh, add more shape to the model and just uh, brings that sort of nice um, core together. Okay, and uh, onto the other skulls. Uh, as, I, as I said, I wanted them to be slightly different to the ones um, engraved onto the armor plates. And this is Iroko uh, going over the top of the um, the heavy brown, uh, which is a slightly yellowy um, bone colour, uh, and it's just going to have a very nice effect on the um, undertone colours, um, meaning that I've got two different types of uh, bone. Um, but are still very sim similar enough to be the same thing. Again, adding some birch into the Iroko. Uh, birch is a lovely colour for highlighting. Um, does as much the same as ivory, uh, but it's a little bit more yellowy. Um, so it's uh, not quite as light. But it does change, of course, subtly as well. So, uh, adding that to the Iroko, which is uh, quite a yellowy colour in itself, going over the uh, going over the dark brown, gives you a nice yellowy colour. Uh, but we're going to still take that um, to a bone colour by adding ivory into it, which is going to start to lighten it. So this is um, pretty much pure birch at this stage, and um, this is just uh, getting some final highlights from the birch onto the. Um, raised areas of the uh, skulls and that uh, before we start finishing it off with the uh, ivory uh, mixture. So adding ivory into it now, as you can see it's got a, um, a quite vibrant change but it really goes nicely over the yellows, over those yellowy colours. Uh, especially if you leave some of the yellow showing through, it really just uh, uh, takes away from that um, yellowy colour a little bit. But because the paint's thin, it still, it still shows through somewhat and just gives you a nice um, colour change to the uh, traditional bone colour whilst um, maintaining that yellow hue. Onto the helmet, uh, well, the salamander helmet. Um, this is. Um, Green Skin Flesh by Scale75. Uh, took a little bit of a, um, a moment for me to figure out what the uh, uh, paint was called because Dodge can't spell and uh, my writing is absolutely horrend horrendous. 
So uh, it took us a little bit of a game to get that um, colour uh, worked out. But as you can see, we're getting a nice coat of, uh, of the green skill flesh on there to uh, bring it up to a nice vibrant green. So the next layer is Irati green, um, which is a quite vibrant colour, uh, but it goes over really nicely um, over this um, particular colour. Uh, and it starts to uh, add some nice highlights to it. Um, so we can keep, again, keeping the paint really thin, uh, so uh, when you um, add the um, the Urati green, you're still showing some of the... Uh... Next is Goblin Flesh, uh, which is just going to go uh, onto the edges of the uh, helmet. Um, again, a uh, very vibrant colour, but uh, these uh, three colours work really well together, and you get a really nice, vibrant um, Salamander Space Marine helmet. Uh, really does... Uh, work as a nice little tricolour there. So I'm going to start highlighting the, um, the spikes, the bones, uh, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and this is a Kokum Copper, uh, which strikes me as a, an odd choice by its name, but it's naturally a coppery colour. It's more, it's on the copper spectrum, but it's more of, um, but not a metallic colour. It's a brown. Um, nice colour going over the uh, Mornfang. Um, as you can see, it's quite yellowy. Uh, but it highlights the Morphang up lovely. So now I've added a little bit of sandalwood, which is a, a quite grey, quite um, a grey brown. Uh, but again, it's going to go over the um, coke and copper and a uh, Mornfang, and you're going to get a nice uh, transition between the three colours as it uh, starts to uh, add together. And we're going to start uh, throwing some more colours in there. Now I'm being careful to leave some of the uh, um, darker colours showing through because we want to uh, keep this um, on the brown side of things uh, while still um, lightening it up. So now I'm adding some birch to it now. As you can see it's a really bright colour now and uh, because we've got that nice transition to the, through the sandalwood uh, it's allowing us to do that, uh, these jumps uh, quite vibrantly. And now a little bit of birch on its own, just to uh, add the hi final highlights to it to make it more of a bone colour um, rather than a, a wood colour. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's a similar colour to the um, skulls, but it is different enough to differentiate between the two. And uh, leaving the um, darker areas around um, really does assist. So now I'm putting a uh, an eye graft wash on there uh, into the uh, recesses on the uh, uh, the helmet um, onto the helmet's horns, uh, just to uh, darken the uh, most uh, deeper recesses. So this is deep Prussian blue again. It's got a little bit of Tesla in there, uh, starting to work on all the blue sections. This is going to start working on the upper upper areas. I'm going to be taking it slow, uh, gently into the deeper se um, sections, but um, I'm leaving uh, most of it, um, most of the darker areas are going to be in the, just a pure deep Prussian blue. Just, the Tesla is just going to change the uh, light and the colour a little bit, allowing us to start with the highlights at a really early area. So this is um, a second layer with additional Tesla in now and doing basically the same thing but uh, keeping um, those bands ever shrinking. As you can see it's going to uh, just, it brings the colour up really nice and you get a real rich blue colour. It's quite a navy sort of blue I suppose, uh, quite deep. But the, uh, the Tesla just adds an, enough uh, of the brighter um, colour to it 
uh, just to change the uh, colour a little bit and it's starting to get some highlights showing through. Um, again, uh, taking it into some of the deeper areas but uh, predominantly uh, leaving it uh, just, to the high, just to the highlight high spots. Now we're pretty much pure uh, Tesla at this stage. As you can see I'm just starting to uh, work only on the highlighted areas now. Um, this is going to start um, sort of blending through. It's going to be almost sort of a glaze style hi uh, highlight. Um, I did tend, I did take a bit more time, spend a bit more time working on the blue sections than I did the white. Uh, I'm not really sure why. I think I just got into a bit of a groove and enjoyed myself. Uh, sometimes happens, and uh, as you know, you've seen me uh, get a little bit over the top with areas what you can't even see. So these things happen, and uh, you just get into a groove and you start painting. And uh, yeah, once you start enjoying yourself, things really can um, become interesting. So now I've added some Mediterranean blue uh, by Scale Certain Guys, quite a um, vibrant colour. And this is going to start going onto the uh, most extreme highlight areas, um, almost like a line highlight. Uh, but we're keeping the uh, keeping the, water, the paint quite thin, so uh, so it almost glazes into the um, dark in, into the other colours as well. So it's like a kind of a hybrid between a, an edge highlight and a, a glazed highlight. I just add a little bit of an edge highlight with the uh, Tesla, uh, sorry, the Med Mediterranean blue, uh, a little bit more than uh, of a mix. And you can just see the uh, highlights just really starting to pop um, on them upper edges. Okay, it's about time we did some more work on a cloak, and at this point, um, working on a cloak, it is a blood red. Uh, that's going straight over the top of the corn red. As you can see, it's a, a nice, uh, vibrant colour, but it's not over the top. The uh, dark, uh, the darker red uh, filters through lovely on this, um, and so it's just nice and easy going over the top of all the. Um, uh, all the darker colour, uh, leaving some of it showing through. Still only, it's still only highlights. Um, keeping some of the dark, darkest of the colours um, showing, but uh, for the most part, we're doing a full layer of the uh, uh, with the blood red. Just really add some colour to it. Once the blood red's dry, um, once the blood red's dried up, I'm using uh, Tinderloss red. And that's going right into the deepest of the recesses, and so in, uh, in the mid, the mid um, layers of the, of the shades are sh still showing some of the, um, the corn red. The tin layers is going right into the deepest sections uh, to add some real depth to it because it's a nice, rich, dark red. Back to back to the blood, back to the blood red again, and we're starting to uh, focus on the most upper areas. Any of the areas where the blood red's showing through, we're just um, just butting up to the edges of that. Um, just going to start brightening up some of the uh, darker sections as well, just to uh, where that tinless red's gone a little bit over, um, a little bit heavy. And we're just uh, starting to add the highlights in now. Really starting to make the um, cloak look like it's got a bit of movement to it. So now onto Antares Red, and um, that is going to be uh, going all over the highlights now. As you can see, just um, it's a very subtle change between the Blood Red and the Antares, so really get a nice effect between the two. So once that's all dried up, it is Aldebaran red now, uh, quite an orangey colour. It's starting to work on the um, extreme highlights, as you can see. 
Uh, now this is a really good colour again going over the uh, Aldebaran red. The red range on the scale 75 is really su uh, really nice, it's, it changes ever so subtly uh, which gives you a lot of um, opportunity to um, play with the colours. Uh, it's a colour, red is a colour I tend to struggle with um, but this uh, particular batch of colours is really up my game. And for the final edge highlight on the uh, cloak is a Mars orange and I'm going around any of the uh, imperfections in the cloak. Uh, as you can see right on the bottom edge is also the little uh, holes uh, going to get highlighted up with the uh, Mars orange. I'm using a very thin brush at this because I want to just get the highlights really really neat. Uh, as you can see just starts to add that little bit of uh, colour to it and really uh, makes the uh, it really makes the uh, cloak look uh, look really nice. At this stage, I finally decided I was going to paint a weapon and decided what colour it was going to be. So the hammer is start off with a Balthazar gold, which is GW paint. Uh, I wanted a, a golden type weapon, but I couldn't decide what, col um, what what I wanted to do with it. I went with a slightly different gold, um, much more of a bronze sort of uh, gold, I suppose, and giving it a nice coat of that across the entire weapon, including the energy pack, which I made. As you can see, uh, getting a weapon um, looking right, but also subtly different um, was important. I didn't want it to work. Uh, blend in with the armour, uh, the armour's trim uh, too much. So the next layer was Rune Lord Brass, uh, again GW paint, uh, go, goes over the uh, Balthazar gold, lovely actually. Um, it, I was, would normally use it with um, one of the uh, warp block bronze, but it goes over Balthazar gold uh, uh, quite nicely as well. Um, which uh, was a bit of an experiment on my part. Uh, don't usually use these uh, particular golds uh, very often, but it did come out with a nice effect. Once the Rune Lord had gone down, uh, Psychorox Bronze, uh, starting to add some nice highlights to it. Um, Going to uh, again keep on um, bringing those uh, upper corners up. Uh, starting to leave the, uh, de uh, the shaded areas as they are at this stage. I uh, wanted to make the uh, highlights really vibrant um, and keep the darker, se darker sections. So adding some more um, silver into the Psychorax, which is quite a silvery colour already. Uh, this is added um, just to the final highlight of the stage. Um, just to uh, really make the uh, upper corners nice and vibrant. So whilst all, uh, after all that had dried, brought the um, all all the colours together with a wash. Um, this was Rickland, uh, nice uh, red browny colour, uh, just to add a little bit of depth to the model. Also brings the colours together nicely. And uh, once that dried, I'm going up again with the Psychorax and heavy metal mix as well, just to uh, finish it off. As you can see, back in with the uh, Psychorex and uh, heavy metal mix, just on the extreme edges. Uh, that Reekland, um flesh shade really did help bring the colours together, add a nice uh, shade to the model as well. So, working on the um, leather now, this is Bosch Chestnut. Um, Going over straight over the uh, black leather, uh, just to add a little bit more uh, brown to it because the black leather is still quite purpley. I didn't want to do it the same way as I've done a lot of other colours. Sorry, a lot of other leathers, what I've done in time. I'm doing exactly the same thing on the handle as well. The, uh, the, the leather wrapping is getting done in the exact same colour. 
but it's pretty much pure orange leather because these are quite subtle changes and using it's starting to use a really narrow brush at this stage as you can see I'm just starting to feather out towards the edges of the model So now I'm adding some Iroko into the mixture and starting to just uh, focus on the extreme edges and uh, adding a few little imperfections into the uh, leather as well just to uh, add a little bit of um, texture to the model and really just sort of adds that sort of uh, worn uh, look to it um, and just makes it look a little bit more uh, interesting. And last on to the uh, pouch, it's a little bit of birch, just starting to add a little, um, few more imperfections onto the uh, edges of the um, uh, ammo pouch. As you can see, it's quite strong, so I'm going to darken it up with uh, some of the uh, dark colours again. So, so now, uh, starting to add some flaws in the armour now, uh, using Rhinox Hide. Uh, which was the colour, and I'm just basically painting some uh, lines all over the armour um, so he sort of ties in with the um, rest of the model. Not had much practice in doing it in this particular style, uh, normally doing it in more of a stippling manner, uh, so this was a bit of a, an experiment. I've seen a lot of nice effects done with it on uh, various um, uh, platforms before, uh, some very nice uh, touches. So once I've got the hang of it, I can, I'll definitely uh, be able to. Um, do, do something a little bit better but this is a simple method of uh, adding some uh, scratches into your armour playing so now you uh, add a, once you've got enough uh, the scratches where you want them add some uh, uh, silver I'm using a lead belcher here uh, onto the uh, brown. Uh, this is uh, where it's gone to bare metal. It just sort of adds a bit of lift to the um, to the model, makes it look a bit more authentic. So it's not uh, just painted on brown bits. It looks a bit more natural. Uh, and if you keep it where the um, the damage would naturally fall, uh, so joints and flat sections towards the front in this case on a space frame. Uh, it's, it does look quite good. There we are, that's him up to that level. So now we're going to be a little bit daring. I'm going to use Streak and Grime, but I've done, uh, I did something a little bit daring. Where I'm blasting the entire model with a full coat of Streak and Grime out of the airbrush. You can do this by hand. I uh, did the airbrush because it was quicker. Um, and once the Streak and Grime has gone down, you then pull it all off with. Um, a Q-tip or a uh, combo, whatever you want to call them. But you've got to let it dry. It needs to dry real hard. So I left this overnight, and I got a uh, cotton bud, a little bit of uh, turps on there, and I start beavering away, cleaning the model up. And uh, yeah, I've seen this work really well, uh, so I thought, sod it, I'll give it a try, and it. It's actually quite interesting to get some of the effects on there. As you can see, I kept the, kept it away from the uh, cloak as best as possible, or and any areas what did get on the cloak, I'd give it a real good clean. But you've got to make sure you varnish it first, um, because that allows the uh, street and grime to come off really nicely, and also protects the paint underneath from um, the abrasiveness of uh, whatever it is you're using to pull the uh, street and grime off with. your last. Yeah, should I? Right. Still alright? Yeah, it's keeping him sent busy. He's just bored with being inside all the time. Yeah, it's all the same. I'll ask what I said for you as well. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I said hi or whatever. I'm still alive. 
which is fucking surprising, really. Oh, yeah, we need to fucking sort out that bank transfer for us, too, don't we? Uh, oh, no. still downstairs, yeah. Either that would just leave a lot of cash in the envelope. Yeah, I just how I prefer to do things anyway. That cash for that rent for that month is actually in a, my bank account. Um, been there a while waiting for a transfer. I'm going to have to figure all this out. Still pulling my head back together. <laughs>